my friends! I hope you're doing all well. Welcome to the first part of the Make All Tanks Cry video. Today we will talk about 8 of the existing 15 tanks. You will learn the basics about how each of them works, what they are going to do most likely to play out their strengths and what you can do against it. It's basically the principle of if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. To clarify something, I'm always taking the primary role of the heroes. Lolita's main role for example is support and that's why she will be covered in the support video. Same goes for Faramis by the way, I haven't forgotten him. Now before we start, the 5 shoutouts of today goes to Namikaze Naruto, Lan Christopher, Tristan Zakim, Knocknock7 and the Banana Man. As always, write something nice in the comments. Also I want to give a very special shoutout to Isoya Yasushi. As you know, I just launched my discord server or if you didn't know, feel free to join and I had no idea what I'm doing. If you want to rank me in Mobile Legend terms, I would be in the warrior rank in discord. He helped me so much setting things up and without him, I would have spent countless hours to setting up everything. So please, go support his channel, he really deserves it. Now let's get into today's topic. Okay. We start with this cute cuddly panda bear. First his passive, after using any skill, he gains a little shield from his passive. This has a 2.5 seconds cooldown. His first skill lets him jump and slows enemies by 30% when hitting them. This is his engage or escape skill, since he can simply jump over a wall. His second skill deals AOE damage and marks all hitted enemies with a frog mark for 5 seconds. There are a couple of things to know. Firstly, Akai's basic attack deals extra damage to marked enemies, 5% of his max HP as physical damage, to be precisely. When he has a lot of HP from his items, he can easily deal a lot of damage. And secondly and most important, when he hits you with his first skill while you are marked, you will be stunned for 1 second and this is the worst what can happen to you, because then he can easily push you anywhere where he wants with his ult. He removes all CC effects from him, except suppression and knocks back all enemies and silence them for 3.5 seconds. He also gains plus 30 movement speed while using it and becomes immune to slow effects. So simply walking away doesn't work once he caught you. Also when he pushed you against the wall, you are becoming a sitting duck because you will be continuously silenced and can't move anymore. Then you can only hope for your teammates to help you or that your enemies are dumb enough to not eat you up alive. So that's the first tip, don't start any ganks in the narrow jungle places. If he manage to pin down 2 or 3 of you, it's almost guaranteed that you will lose that gank. Next, really try to avoid getting marked. Although the skill is quite slow, when it explodes on the minion for example and you are in the area of it, you are still getting marked and unless you have a dash skill with which you could escape quickly, you can be sure that he will try to jump on you right after you are marked and then you become his dance partner. Also if he uses petrify, he could also jump on you without even marking you and stun you this way. What you can do against his ult is interrupting it with, su is interrupting it with suppression, airborne, transform or freeze effects. Also playing a hero who can become immune to CC effects is very beneficial because it allows you to escape easier. CC removal effects like from 1-1 one -one or Valir doesn't work that well. You basically only remove one knockback but the next knockback will hit you again so don't feel safe from his ult because of this skills. Also with most heroes you can chase him down, he can simply jump over a wall and he's gone. But since you shouldn't chase a low tank anyway and focus on objectives, you will never be in this situation, right? Now let's talk about good and bad picks against him. With an immobile hero, you could feel like being in your worst nightmare because he can knock you around wherever he wants and you can't do much against it. If you play one, make sure to use purify or flicker so you have a chance to escape. He is also a good counter against Fanny if she tries to spam the enemy dead near a wall. Heroes who can keep their distance to him or have a blink skill to avoid his jump on the other hand works very well. Heroes who can interrupt his ult obviously as well. Examples for this are Nana, Aurora, Kaja or Kufra. Also as mentioned, Purify can be your savior when you're trapped in his ult. I hope I haven't forgot anything but in the case that I did, write it down into the comments. Any addition is happily received. Now let's move on to Marshall. He's really an interesting hero. His passive reduces the final damage received by 25 and he reduces the regen effect of enemies by 30% when he hits them with a skill. This lasts for 4 seconds, so he has a default anti-heal included in his asset. 
This is by the way stackable with a life drain effect from the anti heal items. His first skill lets him rollin'. If he hits an enemy, he deals magic damage. All of his skills deal magic damage, by the way. Stuns the enemy for 0.8 seconds and slightly knocking back nearby enemies. He can also jump while he is accelerating forward and also jump over obstacles. If he hits an enemy while he jumps, the damage is slightly increased and the stun duration is increased to 1 second. When he hits an enemy minion or jungle creep, he stops as well. So if you run away from him, make sure to use them to not get hit. The roll doesn't go forever as well. It stops after 9 seconds. With a second skill, he throws a shield against your head that deals damage, which is increased by his magic power and by 6% of the target's max HP. So someone with a lot of HP can take quite some damage from it. It also slows you down by 50% for 1 second and when he hits an enemy or creep with it, the cooldown of it is reduced by 85%, so be careful. While it disappears when hitting a hero or a creep, it will not disappear when hitting a minion, so you cannot hide from it behind minions. With his ult, he increases his movement speed by 30% and creates a lava path each 0.5 seconds that deals continuously damage while you touch it and slows you down by 15%. If he stands on one place still and you're next to him, the lava path will stack up and the damage becomes quite high, so don't do that. The damage reduction effect from his passive is also increased by 140%. If we do the math, it's increased by 35 points, so 60 damage reduction in total. The ult lasts for 10 to 14 seconds, depending on his level. So from his skill set, you can already see the difference to Akai. Barxia lacks the CC skills, but has potentially more damage and is able to sustain more. He's one of the tanks that you could call a meat shield, at least in the early game. By the way, I can really recommend you this Reddit post from I Like Mages. To give you a little look behind the scenes, I'm always researching if I forgot to mention anything about a hero for this video. And while researching, I found this post about understanding heroes archetypes and how to counter them. I think it can give you a great overview on how to counter certain hero archetypes. And you should definitely check it out and if you have a Reddit account, upvote it and leave a nice comment. Back to Baxter now. You can expect fast rotation from him due to his first skill. So when you see him on the lane next to you, he could be near you a couple of seconds later. Make sure to not get hit too often by a second skill. Your HP can go down really fast this way. He's also super good at chasing. So if possible, retreat a bit earlier and not with 1 HP. Chasing him is of course pointless anyway. Picking a hero with regen abilities is also a big no-no against him because he's the best counter for it in the game. What he lacks is of course the CC skills. He has no skill with which he could protect his allies. So unless the enemy have other heroes with heavy CC skills, it's a big advantage in any ganks for you because you can easily target the squishy enemies. He's also becoming weaker in the late game because his damage reduction is fixed and with a higher damage from everyone, he becomes much less tanky. Any stun effect can stop his roll in as well, what can ruin his engage attempts completely. That's all for Baxia. Let's move on to... Balaric. His passive can be tricky for many heroes. For each 50 damage he's receiving, he has a 25% chance of attacking the nearest enemy unit and deals 95 magic damage plus 5 for each level and plus 2% of his current max HP. This can be triggered all 0.4 seconds. Also, he obtains 40% more HP from items and emblems. So already from this, you can already guess what he's aiming at. HP. A lot of HP. With his first skill, he releases vines into a designated direction, dealing magic damage and slows down enemies by 25%. On the path, he leaves seeds and after 1 second, the seeds will deal additional magic damage and taunt enemies for 1.2 seconds. If you're taunted, your hero becomes uncontrollable for you and tries to use basic attacks on Balaric. With his second skill, he increases his movement speed by 80% and his next basic attack becomes enhanced. The enhanced basic attack deals magic damage and slows down his target by 60% for 1.4 seconds. He also regenerates 240 plus 10% of his lost HP. With his ult, he immobilizes nearby enemies for 2 seconds and deals 4 times damage to them. After he casted it, there is a little delay though, so you can escape it after he casted it. So, what he's most likely to do is that he will run towards the squishy heroes of your team with a second skill and try to use his first and ult on them, so his team can easily win the gank. He will also try to be close to you, so when you damage him, his passive fires back at you. So what you shouldn't do is picking squishy heroes that deal many small amount of damage that add up. For example Claude or Mia. 
because they trigger his passive non-stop. The opposite, burst damage, works really well against him though, because his passive is not triggered often by a few hits. Heroes who can keep their distance to him are also very effective, because his passive can reach them. Or at least, be not the closest target to him. So his passive is not aiming at you. You can also use minions or jungle creeps to your advantage for that. Although Demon Hunter Sword is usually good against tanks with high HP, against Balleric it's maybe not the best choice, because the extra damage can also trigger his passive. You're also somewhat safe from him in your turret. If he's in your turret, you can attack him and trigger his passive, so the turret starts to focus him. What's also very effective against him are CC removal or immunity skills, so you can escape his CC skills. Purify works as well of course. Playing a high mobility hero also makes it much easier to dodge his ult. Franco. Although his skills are widely known, we will still go through them quickly. After 5 seconds not taking any damage, he increases his movement speed by 10% and regenerates 1% of his max HP every second. His first skill is his hook, you all know what it does. To get straight to the point, what can you do to not get hooked? Firstly, playing a hero with CC removal or immunity is a huge advantage and lets you escape easily. You can of course also use purify. When he wants to launch his hook, you can see it from the animation, as long as he's not launching it from a bush of course. If he launches it, I would change the direction you're moving, to avoid it. Most Frankos will aim directly at you or to the path you're running, only the godly ones anticipate it. But if you play against one, change the way you try to dodge the hook. You can also hide behind minions and jungle creeps. With his second skill, he creates a shockwave. Dealing a fixed amount of damage, plus 4% of his max HP is physical damage. He's also slowing down nearby enemies by 70% for 1.5 seconds. With his ult, he suppresses a designated enemy for 1.8 seconds and deals damage 6 times. Suppression is the only CC skill which you can't remove with purify or CC removal effects. But this can be interrupted by heroes who are not getting suppressed. So for example, if one of your teammates is getting targeted by Franco's ult, you can stun him to cancel the ult. So, what will he do most likely? After the game started, he will most likely try to hook the buff away from the jungler. So as tank and mage, you should definitely support your jungler, so that the jungler can secure his buff. As jungler, you could also think about to take the red buff first. Most Frankos will expect that you will go first to the blue buff, so with the support of your allies, you should be able to take that without too much trouble. Picking a jungler who can clear the buff fast is advisable, especially when you cannot be sure if your allies really support you. In a skirmish, like a 2v2, he can play out his strengths the best. He will try to hook the damage dealer and use his ult on them. This can be already enough to make the fight a very one-sided affair. That's why you should be really careful when engaging a squishy hero. Find the right moment and keep your distance to him to avoid his ult. In a 5v5, he becomes less scary because his hook and his ult is single targeted. Also, he's not as tanky as most other tanks in the game, so it's easier to take him down. As tank, don't be afraid to protect your allies from his hook and stand in front of them. When you're getting hooked and you play a hero like Tigreal for example, he gives you basically a free engage and this you could use to your advantage. Now for the heroes you should choose. When you play a hero with long range attacks, you're good to go. As long as you manage to dodge Franco's hooks, you shouldn't have too many problems against him. The only way he could catch you is with his flicker then. Playing a hero with a dash skill would be also a good thing, because it makes it much easier to dodge the hook. When you play a hero with the ability, to instant stun the enemy, you can use it on him to interrupt his ult and save your teammates. What you shouldn't pick are heroes who have one mega strong ult, because Franco can easily interrupt it with his ult. Talking about heroes like Claude, Odette or Badang for example. Playing a squishy hero who have to get close to its target is also not the best idea, because again, his ult can stop them easily, for example Fanny. And last, when you play a hero with low mobility, you have to be good at dodging his hook, otherwise the game could become a nightmare for you. Examples are Eudora, Vale or Layla. His passive increases his movement speed, physical and magic defense and his HP regen when he's near a wall or a turret, so he will always try to be near one, just that you are aware of that. The wall he creates with his second skill also counts for it. You can see that it's active by the shield around him. With his first skill, he starts to charge his attack and the more it's charged, the higher damage it deals. Fully charged, it really deals a huge amount of damage for a tank. When he hits an enemy, he also slows him down by 40% for 2 seconds. He also becomes immune to CC effects while he charges and he's near a wall. 
With the second skill he creates his wall, which he can use in many different ways. Blocking escaping enemies, lets his allies retreat, blocking minions away from the turret… There are many ways how he can use it. Using this skill makes a difference in between a good and a bad grog player. Better hope you play against one that is trapping his own teammates. With his ult, he is charging forward and deals physical damage to all enemies in his path and knocking them up. He is immune to CC effects while charging, except suppression, airborne, transform and freeze effects. When he's hitting a turret or a wall, he deals a huge amount of extra damage and reduces the cooldown of his skill by 30%. So, in the early game, you can expect him to play very aggressive. His first skill damage is really high early on and the cooldown of it is pretty low. So as squishy hero, you definitely need support against him. If you run around alone, one fully charged first will take away almost half of your HP, especially as jungler you need support or you have absolutely no chance when he invades it. Otherwise he's a great meat shield. So don't be a noob and blast your ult into his stone face. Also never forget his CC immunity when he uses his first skill. So when he charges towards you, just try to get out of there. He can also be played very effectively on the side lane, so be aware of that. Uh, I hope I haven't given any grogman some nasty ideas now. Forget what I said, he's really bad on the side lane. So, while he deals a huge amount of damage, has CC immunity, has a good mobility because of his passive and is really tanky, he lacks one thing, CC abilities. The only CC ability he really has is his ult and that's not enough to stop any team in a gank. So, just make sure to not waste your skills on him but on the squishy enemies because he can't really protect them from you. Items like Demon Hunter Sword, Glowing Wand or Malefic Roar can be really helpful to tear him apart and any damage that takes the max HP of your enemy into account as well. Playing a hero who can abuse his walls would be a very good idea as well. Examples are Akai, Badang or Fanny. You can also pick them of course if your teammate plays Grog. Don't use your CC skills on him while he is charging and his passive is active. Just wait until it's over and then use it. Or you just avoid being near a wall. Then he have to leave them if he wants to attack you. Hylos. Another meat shield hero and probably my favorite tank to play along with Tigreal and Kufra. His passive lets him receive 1.5 max HP for every point of mana he gained from equipments and emblems. Once he has no more mana, he can use his HP to cast his skills. So, don't think you are safe from him just because he has no mana. With his first skill, he deals magic damage and stuns an enemy for one second. With his second skill, he releases the Ring of Punishment. He deals every second damage to the surrounding enemies, slowing them by 6% and reduces their attack speed by 5%. This can stack up to 10 times. Each stack lasts for 2.5 seconds and increases the damage of the ring by 5%. With this skill, he can deal a good amount of continuous damage to the enemy. With his ult, he creates a pathway for 6 seconds. He recovers 3% of his max HP and becomes immune to slow effects while he's on it. Allies moving towards the pathway increases their movement speed by 60%, himself included, while enemies moving away from it will have their movement speed reduced by 70%. So in conclusion, he's another tank who can deal and take a huge amount of damage. Due to his passive, he will stack up a huge amount of HP what lets him use his skills for a very long time and also lets him sustain a lot. Again, against this, you can use items or heroes with skills that target the max HP of an enemy. He will be most likely very aggressive in the early game, although he's not as good at invading as heroes like Grog or Jawhead, but in a 1v1 against a squishy hero, he will come out on top in the early game. In general, he's effective against burst damage heroes because their damage is not high enough to beat him down. And he is also good against immobile heroes because he can easily drain them out of life with his ring and they can't get away from him unless they use flicker. What he is weak against are as mentioned any damage that deals percentage damage or hard CC skills that stops him from engaging. He is also weak against heroes who can keep their distance to him and use range attacks. Kufra. The big ball guy or CC monster, call him whatever you want. After every 12 seconds his next basic attack becomes ranged and lets him deal magic damage based on his physical attack and his max HP. He's also slowing down the target by 30% for 1.5 seconds and regenerates 8% of his max HP. The cooldown of it will be reduced by 4 seconds every time he controls an enemy. So for example, if he controls 3 enemies at the same time, it's instant resetted. His first skill is his engage skill. He charges it and the longer he charges, the further he will jump. If he hits an enemy hero, he will knock them 
and all nearby enemies up for 1.1 seconds. The knocked up duration also scales up, the longer he charges the skill. For this, I highly recommend to turn off the in-game music. When he charges his skill, you can hear it even when he's in the bush, so you can prepare for it and dodge it when he comes flying. Back then when I started to play ML, he was the reason why I turned it off. For exact this reason, he can also pass through obstacles with it, so be aware that he can jump on you from anywhere. With his second skill, he becomes a bouncing ball, what increases his physical and magic defense by 30%, which scales up to 100% on the highest level. When you try to use a blink skill to move across him, you will be knocked up. That includes flicker, so don't waste it. Each time the ball hits the ground, he will deal magic damage to all nearby enemies and slows them by 80% for 0.2 seconds. This skill is a nightmare for all heroes with blink skills. By the way, you can still target him with stunts. That doesn't stop him from bouncing, but he can move, what lets you and your teammates much easier escape from him. It can be cancelled by airborne, freeze, suppression or transform effects. With his ult, he pulls all enemies in front of him, dealing physical damage and slows down enemies by 1.25 by to 1.75 seconds. If he knocks the enemy against the wall, he deals more damage and the enemies are getting stunned instead of slowed down, for the same amount of time. So in conclusion, we can all agree on that he is a CC machine and this is what he will do most of the time, trying to control the damage dealers to turn any ganks into his team's favor. His damage is also quite high, especially in the early game. There he is able to solo kill squishy enemies, so never underestimate him. One thing you and your teammates should really avoid against him is staying all in one spot. This is like a wet dream for him. And when he can control your whole team, he can wipe out all of you when his teammates follow up. In general, playing heroes who are vulnerable to CC skills is a very bad idea against him, unless you are really careful around him or use Purify. Using heroes who rely on dash skills also have problems against him because of his ball. Heroes on the other hand who have CC removal or immunity skills have a quite easy time against him, as well as heroes who have instant stun abilities. After he engages and didn't hit you, you can simply stun him and ruin his engage completely. Another problem that he has is that he's definitely no meat shield. Usually he makes his combo and try to back out afterwards, so don't be shy to attack him. Don't blast 4 ults into his face of course, but taking him down is not as difficult as heroes like Rock or Hylos. Also be aware of his long cooldowns. Once he used all his skills, he has nothing left and kinda becomes a sitting duck. Tigreal. The last hero for today and the only tank I've actually made a hero guide about. With his passive, he gains immunity to one basic attack after he receives 4 layers of blessing. The blessing he receives by getting hit from basic attacks from heroes or jungle creeps. You can see that it's active by his shield. With his first, he smashes the ground and sends 3 ways forward, each dealing physical damage and slows down an enemy by 10%. There's not much to say about it. It's a spoking skill basically. When you run away from him, try not to get hit by all 3 waves. With his second skill, he has 2 CC effects. First, he's knocking back all enemies who are in the way where he's charging. 4 seconds afterwards, he can knock up all enemies in the direction he's aiming at. The knock up skill is an airborne effect, so you could interrupt Kufra's ball for example. And this he will most likely use to push you either towards his allies or into his tower. So be careful and aware of it when he's around. He can also use Flicker to teleport behind you and push you then. I personally think that this is the better use for Flicker for him than with his ult. With his ult, he pulls all enemies around him towards him and stuns them for 1.5 seconds. Importantly, while he's pulling the enemies towards him, this can be interrupted by stuns. So having a hero in the team with instant stun effects like Eudora for example is a massive advantage against him. The pros and cons regarding him are pretty similar to Kufra. His cooldowns are also pretty long, so as Kufra he engages and retreats again. He's also not as tanky as meat shield heroes. Heroes with dash skill has no problem against him though. In his case it's advisable to pick one with dash skills to dodge a second skill. Also, heroes with CC immunity or removal skills are a good pick against him, as well as using Purify. As I said, it's really similar to Kufra. He will try to control the damage dealers so his teammates can wipe the floor with you. Now, go and check out the other weaknesses videos if you haven't already. And see you soon for part 2. Have a great day!